Welcome to this session of the Cyber Leaders Exchange. My guest today is Jim Halu, the worldwide lead for U.S. Public Sector Marketplace at AWS. Jim, uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to join us today at the Cyber Leaders Exchange. Jason, good to see you again. Looking forward to the dialogue today. We just heard a, a whole day about zero trust and where agencies are at. We heard from Krista Russia, the Federal Chief Information Security Officer, about the, his, the progress he's seen agency-wide. We heard from, obviously, a lot of different uh, vendor partners who are, are helping agencies move the ball forward. Let me start by, because you're bringing, coming from a little different of a perspective. You're looking at maybe some of the acquisition side of it, the trends. So what are some of those trends you're seeing around transactions, around the buying of, of zero trust products and services throughout the public sector? Yeah, it's interesting, Jason. So, you know, AWS Marketplace is this digital marketplace with thousands and thousands of products, right? So we've got 13,000 products in the catalog. But when we distill down what's happening in public sector, not only U.S., but globally, the, the vast preponderance of what people are buying, like well over 50 percent, is in that security category. So there is clearly a lot going on there. And our public sector customers, cities, counties, federal agencies, you know, big and small, it's top of mind. It's top of mind for a reason. Like there is there's a lot happening from a protection standpoint. And unfortunately, there's a lot happening from a correction standpoint of where breaches have happened. And to be clear, the 50% in the security category is not zero trust per se. It's just all the security pieces and parts. And a lot of that does fit under zero trust. Yes. So when you when you kind of distill down in that 50%, you'll, you'll see a lot of categories that do snap together in the zero trust. You see Zscaler, you see Splunk, you see Okta. And a lot of these folks are working together to build bundled offerings because they know each of them has a piece of the puzzle that the government is looking to. So we, we help them to bring that together to simplify the procurement side of it. And I love this, the zero trust umbrella, the name, people can get tired of it. They feel like it's a marketing thing, but really it does capture really well all the things that have been happening over the last 20 years, but really brings under this, this umbrella. When you talk about uh, the reasons why, a lot of it is be, trying to be more proactive, adding mm -hmm. multi-factor authentication, adding data endpoint detection and response tools, but it's also being very reactive. How do those when you look at the trends throughout the public sector, how does that break down versus reactive versus, versus proactive versus what? Yeah, it, so often things will happen in public sector that don't catch the light of day. So there's a lot of things that may happen that, that are reacted to and, and for good reason, you know, we don't read about it on the front page of the Washington Post. But there are places where we do see. So if you look at, you look at our nonprofit healthcare business, it's been widely publicized that the hospital systems have been under attack and they've been under attack for a while. Uh, there was a, a big hospital system in the Midwest last year that they literally were having to bust patients across town because they had gotten hacked and there was a ransomware thing going on and, and they couldn't get access to patient records. They couldn't get access to medications. It was, it was a really unfortunate situation. So like things like that are scary. And, and I've got a personal experience with it that this happened actually six or seven years ago. I live in a little town in Northern Virginia that is not very big. Our pediatrician, who's like a local doc, he got hacked and all of my kids' immunization records are gone. So it, it's, it's big and small. We're seeing this kind of span from, from big to small. And, and there's, there's nation states that are preying upon these agencies because they know that it's a soft spot. It's challenging when you go to the school system and they go, okay, show us your immunization records for your kids. And you're like, I wish I could. The doctor lost them all. Hopefully they, hopefully they understood that a little bit versus uh, throwing their hands up saying, well, I don't know what to do. When you, when you do see these changes, when you do see the, this, okay, the production, the protection and correction side, are, are there certain things that, that agencies or, or public sector is buying, meaning there's a big push right now for multi-factor authentication. There's a big push for endpoint detection response. Those are the easy ones that obviously we talk a lot about in the federal world. Yeah, so absolutely. We're seeing a lot of, of the, you know, build the appropriate perimeter type tools, but there's also a fair amount of the recovery. And so if you think about CrowdStrike, like they, they have a really nice suite of products that come in uh, both on the front end and the back end. So there's, there's agencies that are trying to, to, to kind of build better defenses. And there's also uh, tools that are being deployed to help kind of remediate things that have happened. So there's, I think there's probably 80% of it is on the build better defenses side of it. And about, you know, the 20% to kind of recover what, what unfortunately went wrong. And the whole point of zero trust is to drive 
those tools, those, those prevention tools to the data, all right, to the edge. Is that still the case or is there some places you're seeing still want to build the bigger wall, the better moat, the, you know, keep them out, uh, you know, the hard outside with soft candy inside. Is that, is that mostly been stopped from what you can tell or is it hard to say based on what they're buying? I think it's dependent upon where we are in public sector. So I think there are some parts of public sector that are far more advanced and realize that, you know, you can put the best walls up, but, you know, unless you've got what's on the inside protected, those walls are meaningless. So there, there's a balance, but I do see a shift towards an, uh, an understanding and an acceptance that, yes, walls are important, but until we actually kind of get inside into understanding, because look, the data says it, most breaches happen from inside. So like that, that in and of itself tells us that, hey, the walls are great, but if you can't figure out how to protect and ensure the folks that are inside are doing the right things, then you're still going to be exposed. And, and I know that's one thing that the Office of Management Budget has been focused on over the last four or five years, high-valued assets. So hopefully that's been kind of uh, trickling down throughout the public sector community at large. One of the big challenges when you talk about zero trust is acquiring of tools is, okay, what tools do I need? What services do I need with those tools? Are you starting to see some of that discussion within the marketplace? Meaning, okay, if I buy, you know, CrowdStrike, how does that integrate with Okta? How does that integrate with Zscaler? How does that integrate with Splunk and so on and so forth? It's it's really interesting to see how this, this community of, of this ecosystem within public sector is coming together. So there's organizations like Smartronics or SMX, who helps to bring together all of these third-party tools because not every agency has the skill set or, or the if they have the skill set, they don't have the depth of skill set to, to make these investments and put them into place as quickly as they need. So there are folks coming into the middle to say, let me snap together these Lego blocks, wrap some services around it and deliver a zero trust architecture for you and you know, Mr. Customer on the end. So there's there's a variety of different, and, and some agencies are like, hey, I got it. I got a really great team. They're super talented. And all I need to do is give them the raw materials and they can build it. So it's, it's been interesting for us from a marketplace perspective to say, okay, we've got a lot of raw materials in the catalog of the, of the products. We have a really robust ecosystem of channel partners and distributors who can help simplify the acquisition. And then depending on how that customer needs the puzzle pieces put together, what we're trying to do from a marketplace perspective is really simplify the procurement and, and enable the customer to say, hey, I want to buy the raw materials. Cool. Let me go buy the raw materials. I want to buy the, the packaged offering. Let me go buy the packaged offering. And if we can compress that, that procurement and simplify that procurement, then we're getting the tools in the hands of the people that need it faster. And one of the biggest challenges when we talk procurement is just the time it can take. And if you're being reactive to a breach or a problem, you need that time cut down as much as possible. Are you seeing the time to really, you know, from the time of need to a time of delivering and start implementation shrinking? How do you measure that? Or how, how do you at the marketplace, because sometimes that's out of your control, what, what kind of metrics are you using to, to say, okay, are we delivering? Are we helping people get to what they need more quickly? Yeah, so, so put yourself in the shoes of a CISO that just went through a breach and, and that CISO now needs to go get software. If he, were to, he or she were to follow the traditional procurement process and go, okay, I'm going to put an RFI out, let all the responses come in. I'm going to instill all the RFIs. I'm going to go now put an RFP out and do all the responses. And then I'm going to go put a, you know, do a, a three bid competition. Like it's too late. It's too late. So what we're trying to do is work with industry and partners to say, let's make sure that that, that government procurement can check the boxes to ensure they're getting the best prices. Let's make sure that the terms of service that they need are in place and we can compress that. And we work with folks like Carasoft. They've got a vast catalog of folks who've done that on the GSA schedule. So we already know GSA pricing. We already know that there's a GSA you know, accepted uh, EULA out there. And what we then do is we compress that procurement time. And actually CrowdStrike is an example where uh, the president of CrowdStrike talked about how they've seen procurement in public sector compressed by up to 45%. So you take that traditional procurement and you squeeze it down 45%. That means we're getting protection in the hands of people a whole lot faster. And, and that's that's part of the big value add that Marketplace brings to the equation is helping government get that in there faster. Part of what Zero Trust does, part of why we were talking about, and there's this big focus, is to get folks ahead of the curve as well to so they can be prepared for when that next cyber attack does occur. Mm -hmm. 
Is that the other thing that you're starting to see is that the time it takes to, to make those decisions? Okay, what do we need? What gaps do we have? How do we fill those gaps? Because it's not always in response to an attack, but oh, we're starting to see a trend that means we have to do X better or, or we have to protect Y differently. Mm -hmm. We are, and we're seeing it in a couple of different areas, Jason. So one is, so the catalog isn't a stagnant fixed catalog of products. We're constantly looking at new technologies that are out there to ensure that as new IP is created and, and, and can add value that we're not just relying on the same stuff that we were looking at five years ago. Because the, the folks who are making the attacks, they're using new means and ways and techniques to, to, to kind of get in. So if all we did is rely on the product from five years ago, we're not going to be very effective. So we're constantly trying to make sure we've got the right products in the catalog. And we're working with the folks who are in there as they make new versions of it. So there's, there's this kind of coming together of old and new to help government ensure that they can get access to the right tools and, and bring those tools in fast. Yeah, I heard the term recently, ransomware as a service or cyber attack as a service, basically. Uh, malicious software as a service, they can, they're, they're, they've changed because obviously we've, uh, uh, the, as agencies, as organizations, cyber defense have gotten better. They've had to change too. And, and their change is much quicker, unfortunately. Uh, Jim, we're almost out of time before I let you go. What's the big takeaway from our day? We've talked a lot about zero trust. We've spent the day understanding where the agencies are, how, how the industry partners can help. What's the message you want to make sure people have as we, we close up our day here on the Cyber Leaders Exchange? I think the biggest challenge that, that, that I see, and, and this is globally, is just the education and awareness of the roles and responsibilities of the different players in the ecosystem. So if I focus on where does marketplace add value and how can we help, it's ensuring that procurement knows that we can compress that procurement time, we can get the tools there while still allowing them to maintain all of the structure and rigor that they're held accountable for. So if, if we can help compress that procurement time by 50%, that means that those procurement officials can, can procure more things faster so that like we're helping them to be more effective and we're getting these really critical tools in the hands of the folks that need it either on the offense or defensive side faster. Jim, uh, I think that was music to a lot of people's ears. So uh, if, you, if you can compress that time by 50%, a lot of people will be very excited. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this session of the Cyber Leaders Exchange. Let me thank my guest. Jim Halu is the worldwide lead for the U.S. public sector marketplace at AWS. Jim, always a pleasure. Thanks for taking the time. Jason, thanks so much. Have a great day. I'm Jason Miller, and you're watching Federal News Network. Now let me send you back to the studio for more from the Cyber Leaders Exchange.